Studies show solar activity has been rapidly decreasing since about 1980. The current cycle, Solar Cycle 24, was the lowest sunspot peak since the early 1800s. That was followed by years of decreased sunspots until now, this past year when we've gone weeks at a time without a single sunspot on the sun's surface. The prior solar cycle, Cycle 23, also had an extended period of very few sunspots compared to any cycle this past century. The grand solar minimum occurs when several solar cycles exhibit lesser than average sunspot activity for decades or even centuries. Solar cycles still occur during these grand solar minimum periods but are at a lower intensity than usual. Grand solar minima have shown some correlation with global and regional climate changes. So what does that mean for us now in our time? Some solar atmospheric scientists relate a relationship between reductions in solar activity and periods of global cooling. The cycle known as the Mondor Minimum, also known as the Prolonged Sunspot Minimum, is the name used for the period starting around 1645 and continuing to about 1715 when sunspots became exceedingly rare. During the Mondor Minimum, observations revealed fewer than 50 sunspots. This contrasts with the typical 40 to 50,000 sunspots seen in modern times. Within the Mondor Minimum, the Little Ice Age known as a period of cooling that occurred after the medieval warm period, northern hemisphere winters were unusually severe and glaciers expanded. This period was accompanied by bitterly cold winters in the American colonies. Fishing settlements in Iceland and Greenland were abandoned. Icebergs were seen near the English Channel, and the canals of Venice froze. It was a great time of hardship. Could this large reduction in solar activity result in a slowdown in the decades-long warming trend? To find out, we have to examine the solar cycles. What is a solar cycle? This cycle is sometimes referred to as the sunspot cycle. It is the amount of magnetic flux that rises up to the sun's surface and varies with time in a cycle called the solar cycle. The solar cycle was discovered in 1843 by Samuel Heinrich Schwab, who after 17 years of observation noticed a periodic variation in the average number of sunspots. This cycle lasts 11 years on average. Near the minimum of the solar cycle, it is rare to see sunspots on the sun's surface, and the spots that do appear are very small and short-lived. During the solar maximum, there will be sunspots visible on the sun almost all the time. Often there are more than 100 spots visible at any one time. Because the solar cycle reflects magnetic activity, various magnetically driven solar phenomena follow the solar cycle including sunspots and coronal mass ejections. The solar storm of 1859, also known as the Carrington event, was a powerful geomagnetic solar storm during the solar cycle 10, 1855 to 1867. On September 2nd, 1859, an incredible storm of charged particles sent by the sun slammed into the Earth's atmosphere, overpowered it, and caused havoc on the ground. Telegraph wires, the high-tech stuff of the time, suddenly shorted out in the United States and Europe, igniting widespread fires. A solar storm of that magnitude occurring today would cause widespread disruptions and damage to a modern, technologically dependent society. The solar storm of 2012 was of similar magnitude, but it passed the Earth's orbit without striking the planet dodging a very potentially damaging event to our electronic infrastructure, as this NASA image here shows. The big fear is what might happen to the electrical grid, since power surges caused by solar particles could blow out giant transformers. These transformers can take a long time to replace, especially if hundreds if not thousands are destroyed at once. They don't have a lot of these on the shelf, and imagine having to build them with a limited electrical infrastructure. 
The eastern half of the U.S. is particularly vulnerable because the power infrastructure is highly interconnected, so failures could easily cascade like dominoes. One solution is to rebuild the aging power grid to be less vulnerable to solar disruptions. Another is better forecasting. Scientists using the new Solar Dynamics Observatory spacecraft are hoping to get a better understanding of how the sun behaves as it moves deeper into its next maximum and begins generating bigger solar storms. Hey, it's Prepper Action, and do I have survival gear for you? on my newly created Amazon storefront and I want to invite you to take a look. I have broken these items down into six main categories and they are backpacks and bug out gear, extreme survival, first aid, two-way communications, emergency food, and last but not least, clothing for the wasteland. I have everything you need to survive. All these items are top of the line quality gear by name brand companies you already know and trust. I personally pick these items to perform at the highest level of quality and performance expectations. I have already done the research and own some of these products and would highly recommend them to you. You won't find any cheap Chinese knockoffs in my Amazon storefront. Most items are offered as an Amazon Prime purchase so free shipping is a plus. Now Let's have a look at a few gear categories, starting with backpacks and bug out gear. I offer brands like Maxpedition, Bushnell, Camelback, Condor, 511, and more. All gear is chosen to provide you with the reliability and quality that you can count on when you need it. I have items most prepper Amazon storefronts do not have, and I will add more. I have items like Geiger counters, or Geiger counters, is it Geiger counters or Geiger counters? I'm not sure. Biohazard suits, bloodborne pathogen containment cleanup kits, right? Who has that? I do. And I'll be adding to them on a consistent basis. If you check out my Prepper Action Amazon storefront and don't see something you would like, just add a comment to this video. So to visit my Prepper Action Amazon storefront, just click the links provided in this video or on my Facebook page for more information. I am really excited to be able to provide you with great quality gear that you can rely on. I hope you like this video and if you know someone who is in need of, beside yourself maybe, of some great quality gear, send them this link. And that being said, as always, Prepper Action out and be safe.